Welcome to the Worship Tutorials vlog. This week we are going to make a, a camper profile. We're gonna profile a very awesome sounding amp that we have upstairs, and we're gonna show you how we do it. When you make a camper profile, uh, you think the camper is just like, it's a profile of an amp, but it's really the profile of the amp and the entire recording chain that is used to capture the amp. So it's the amp, it's the cabinet, it's the mic or microphones that you use to mic that, it's the preamp that wow. you run those into. The yes. cables too. You can add EQ after the preamp if you want to before you send that signal to the Kemper. If you get a profile from Tone Junkie, from Michael Britt, from us, of the same amp, uh, e even individual amps sound different, but like the things that we all do to these amps to capture that signal is, is very different. It's like if you want a cheeseburger, you may think that eight establishments are great, but they're all going to be approaching a cheeseburger differently. Overall, mm -hmm. you're going to be, this is a cheeseburger. You're going to eat meat, cheese, bun, vegetables, condiments. But there's going to be something that each establishment does to get yes. that little bit extra. Mwah. This is the amp we are profiling today. This is a Tyler HM30. This is Tyler's take on the classic matchless C30. You've got the 12AX7 channel and the EF86 channel. Is that right, Bradford? Sounds like a guitar amp to me. Now the next thing that we do, we have to decide is what cab we're gonna run this through. So we have two cabs to choose from today to record this amp through. Uh, this is the matchless, uh, the 1x12 extension cab that, kind of, that came with my uh, Chieftain over here. So. The, uh, the matchless cab has a single 12 inch uh, matchless sort of branded Celestion G12 H30 speaker, which is a really great all around uh, speaker. It doesn't have quite the mid range push that like the AC30 does with the Celestion Blues. Tyler actually builds this. This is a, a cab that has a 12 inch speaker and a 10 inch speaker in it. Let's see if they're labeled back here. The 10 inch is a Celestion Greenback, which is gonna be similar to the G12H30. And the, the 12 inch, the 10 inch is a Eminence Texas Heat. I think it's Eminence Texas Heat speaker. So uh, I'm not that familiar with this cab. It's also closed back, this is open back. So there's difference there. And those speakers, isn't one a 10 inch and one a 12? Yeah, so this is the 10 inch, this is the 12 inch. So you can see Kevin taped them up. That's yeah. probably right where the cone is, give or take. So you can almost kind of see the circles. I can almost see the circles right there. Yeah. But anyways. And, and we say Kevin because this Tyler amp and cab, didn't, they don't belong to us. No. Uh, they are on loan from us from a friend, Kevin Shuck. Uh, he's letting us borrow these to do some content with, uh, with some other stuff. We all got it from Vintage King. Go to Vintage King. Kevin yeah. is a sales rep there. He works there and they, they are this great is, guys. And this is his personal amp that yeah. he's letting us borrow. By the way, if you have uh, an amp that you think would be cool if we made some Kemper profiles of it. Let us know, get in touch, uh, go to Worship Tutorials, hit the contact page, or just send an email, brian at worshiptutorials.com. Uh, we'd like to talk about that, that could be cool. Yeah. So we're gonna play the amp through both cabs and decide which one sounds the best. So the next decision we'll have to make with this stuff is, which of these to use. So we've got a Shure SM7B, which is uh, famous as a vocal mic, but it works really well on cabs too. You can think of it as sort of a uh, better sounding SM57. Like a more full, more yeah. pristine maybe, warm. Yeah. My personal favorite is the Biodynamic M160. This is a ribbon mic. Really warm and smooth, but also has a really good, like, uh, top in a mid-range punch. And that's like a Royer 121-ish kind of thing, of thing if, yeah. you know, if you're familiar with those. An alternative, yeah. This is uh, sort of the dark horse, if you will. This <laughs> is a Earthworks SR25. So Earthworks, these are really uh, sort of known as a, just an all-purpose instrument mic, but it sounds really good on cabs. It is a condenser mic. Um, so it has a lot more clarity, but it's not super bright. I like to think of this kind of like you get the uh, like the mid-range and the brightness and the punch of a 57, 
but it's warmer and smoother all around. This is a really good mic. And, and it sounds uh, more professional. A 57 yeah. is a little more like raw. To yeah. Me. This is a, uh, a Slate ML2. Uh, this is a modeling microphone. It's $150. It sounds awesome. It models with the Slate software that you have to use in your DAW. Models a 57, it models a, a 121. Um, it sounds pretty close. I've tested it against the 7B because it has that model. The 7B, the real one, sounds a little better. But this gets you in the ballpark. It's a really cool it's, option. It's cheap and flexible. And, mm -hmm. yeah. If like, if you really want a specific sound that this thing models, uh, and you don't have something to get it, it's, it's great for that. So what we have been sort of landing on is a combination of these three. The 160 has been on every uh, Kemper pack that we've released thus far, which is all of three so far. We're yeah. building the library. Uh, this is probably gonna be the workhorse. Uh, this is like my favorite sounding cab mic. And I've been pairing it with, we've been comparing it with uh, either the SR25 or the 7B, and I think we typically land on the 160 and the SR25 as a combination. Yep. You get really warm, smooth, and you get the condenser has a lot of clarity, uh, and together they work really well. So we're testing these speakers out. We tried the eight, the Matchless uh, 112, and we're trying the the, uh, the Tyler cab. Yep. Uh, so immediately what we heard, the Tyler is a closed back cab, uh, it has one of the, a very similar speaker and then the 10 inch, so I don't know what that's doing to the mix. But it's also closed back, so that automatically means it, you're getting more low. Yeah, we got a, you hear a ton, like a significant increase in bass response. It, it warms it up and it gives it like some depth, but I think when we threw it through the matchless cab, I think the open back cab is kind of something that gives matchless that like, it's not Very thin, airy. but yeah, I was, yeah, it's just more airy. It kind of just, it sits a little differently. We're having trouble deciding because they both they sound both good. They both sound really good. But they offer something different. So the thing is, is this is Tyler's take. They did some different things. They tweaked some things to their liking. And so if we ended up doing that and we used a matchless cab, would we be getting something too similar? So we're trying to decide that. You made the point that uh, to keep the Tyler sort of in its own its own thing and, and to separate it tonally from a matchless uh, C30 if we ever get one. It might be smart for us to use the Tyler cab. Yes. And I think that's probably a pretty good way to go. I mean, they both sound really good. And that way it'll make it more of a unique offering. We can always come back and redo it if we really wanted to with the other cab. Uh, but that cab sounds really good. It does both sound great. Yeah, all right. Next, next decision we gotta make is microphones. We've got the Bayer Dynamic. 160 on the 10 inch speaker, somewhat off axis. Uh, sorry, somewhat off the cone, but on axis. We've got the SR25, which is a small diaphragm condenser. Uh, it's gonna be a brighter mic, and we put it on the 12 inch speaker. And then we just positioned them to make sure there was no phasing issues. We ran them both into the Warm Audio 273 EQ, which is a Neve 1073 clone with EQ. We have both channels going into Logic and then they are then summed to a single output which goes to the Kemper. And there's some EQ applied here in Logic as well via the SSL channel strip from Universal Audio. So we're really doing our thing to this signal. Now we're gonna profile this thing. So we're back day two. So I was thinking to myself yesterday, I know what a 12 inch Celestian Greenback is. That's a pretty common speaker. And uh, I don't know, but I don't know what a Eminence Texas Heat is, a 10 inch Eminence Texas Heat. And if you know your Eminence speakers, you might say to yourself, there's no such thing as a 10 inch Texas Heat, which is what I found out. We decided to take the back off and to our dismay, Tyler puts one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 screws 
in the back of this cabinet. So what we found was this is a 12 inch UK made Celestion G12H30 greenback speaker. This is a 10 inch Eminence Ragin Cajun, not a Texas heat. Mm. So, sounds spicy. Let's do a new segment called What's in the Box? As Axe FX3 looks on in the background. This is a new gear day item from me. Looks like it could be old, but it's not that old. Oh, Royer 121 ribbon microphone for the cabinets. It feels like something that it's like from a bygone era of time. Like this feels like antique. It does. I don't know how old this thing is. It's definitely not new. So. Anyway, back to profile. We've successfully finished our Kemper profile pack. Yeah, so we're very happy with it. That will be coming soon. The next thing we've decided to do is, since we have this, we uh, we talked about this yesterday, earlier in the vlog, we decided to use the Kemper, the Tyler, uh, really unique uh, cabinet that has a 12 inch Celestian Greenback and a 10 inch uh, Raging Cajun from Eminence. So we're shooting IRs. So monotonous. Yeah. It's, it's interesting though, it's not that hard to do. Uh, what you do is, here, I've got it in Logic. All right, don't give away our secrets. Here, my, here, here are the secrets. Every uh, law, Apple computer ships with this, uh, maybe you have to have Logic, you might have to buy Logic. It ships with a program called uh, Impulse Response Utility. And what that will do is it will send a signal I uh, won't show you what it sounds like here in a second. It's extremely annoying. <laughs> It'll send a signal, a sweep, through anything really, and you can use it to create an impulse response. So we've just got like all the different mics that we have available to us, and we're the same thing we did with the Kemper. Basically, what you do is you take your cabinet, you mic it up, you run it through whatever processing you want to do. In our case, again, we're running the mics through my warm audio. Uh, preamp, which is a, a Neve 1073 clone preamp, running that into Logic, and then once you get it into Logic, uh, you can do whatever you want with it. So we have a little bit of EQ in Logic, and then uh, what we're doing is we're just running the IR, we're shooting the IRs through that. The way you do it is, uh, you have to have an audio interface that will let you send that sweep out, which if you have any kind of external audio interface, you've got it. You send that to a power amp. Now to shoot an IR, you have to have clean power. You have to. Pa you can't just plug uh, your audio interface into your guitar cabinet. It won't there be no power for it. This is where my IR send is coming out. It's coming out of this, it's this goldish cable. And that cable runs to the uh, power amp and then the power amp runs to the cab and then it just sends this sweep. I think the good people need to hear this annoying tone that we have to, and the noise we have to endure to shoot these IRs. You gotta wear some ear protection for this, cause one, you have to send the signal loud enough to make the speakers work. Otherwise they won't sound like they're supposed to. So you gotta do this loud. Uh, and so, yeah, ear protection is important. All right, Bradford, you ready? Yep. Here comes the test tone. We've successfully built Kemper Profile Pack, uh, Tyler Cabinet Impulse Response Pack. Those IRs should be making their way into some of our Helix patches soon. Yay! So you might be getting some updates with those because they sound really cool. Really cool. This was a less entertaining as far as like stuff we did, but more technically interesting Gosh. vlog, I think, Bradford. I kind of, I'm boring myself thinking about what we've talked about. What today. do you want to see in these vlogs? Let us know in the comments. Subscribe, like, comment, ring the bell, all that stuff. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. See you. You can just plug and chug. <laughs>